What is going on guys? Welcome to this collection video. You know it's a collection video because the shelf is clean and that's where we're going to put our games. In all honesty, this uh, this collection video is inspired a little bit by Alex's Arcade, who uh, is into like all these old consoles, old computer consoles. Uh, Jason Roppers, who's also into like old consoles. MC Murr, all you guys um, that are into things that are older than Nintendo, right? Like older than Nintendo and Master System. Uh, yeah, so today we're looking at the old Intellivision, the Mattel Electronics Intellivision, Intelligent Television. Yeah, this is, uh, this is from 1979, so all of you young guys out there, I am older than the Intellivision, because I was born in 1978, but uh, you just don't see stuff like this on boxes anymore. I think the boxes nowadays for consoles are, are sort of generic almost. We've got our console, we got the, the old wood grain TV, we've got pictures of all the games. You know, there's no DLC with this bad boy, no internet capability. So we've got like descriptions of all the games on the back, like NBA basketball and backgammon, horse racing. It's just crazy. There was a keyboard component that goes with the Intellivision. And then there was also a device called the uh, Intellivoice, which kind of talked back to you. But, uh, yeah, so let me just uh, show you the insides real quick. Uh, so there it is, guys, in the box with the paperwork, the styrofoam, cords, all that stuff. Definitely awesome. I think I picked up this lot at a garage sale this year um, for like 47 bucks or something with a ton of games. So we're going to take a look. There's a family having fun. So that's a look at my boxed uh, console. Here is what a console looks like out of the box, just in case, like I said, some of you some of you cats have never seen one. This is it right here, man. This is the show. Got a uh, reset button right here. We've got our on-off button. We've got two controllers that slide out that are really weird. It's got this uh, disc on there. It's not a D-pad under this disc, but uh, it's just like a disc. And then it looks like a phone. It's got numbers and there's um, overlays that go on these controllers so you know what to do, which is kind of strange. But you got to remember the time, too. You know, this was five or six years before Nintendo put out, you know, their controllers, which revolutionized the entire planet with the D-pad, <laughs> you know. But, um, yeah, so that, that's what it looks like. It's got the old wood grain gold cartridges go right there. And then the back of this bad boy, it's got, uh, you know, an RF switch. So if you're interested in getting a, an Intellivision, make sure your TV has an RF switch in or an RF in. Or you can buy an adapter. The kind that you're probably going to get for, like, four bucks is the RF to coaxial. So you can plug it, like, right into where your cable goes. Or where you used to put in your Sega Genesis and stuff like that, your Nintendo um, and then a you know, standard power cord, but that is it. As I knock all that stuff over, like the controllers all. This is a big, heavy, like, console. Now, like I said, that was the Model 1. They did make a Model 2. I don't have one, but this is what it looks like. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's get in on these games and check them out. As we always do, we'll just stack them up behind us as we go along and we're going to hit our sports games first kind of like every other collection video but i love these boxes man so here's what an intellivision box game looks like it's got these beautiful artwork on the side and then on the back you know it tells you about the game and it's got some screenshots but also has this flap that opens up and your game sits in there you've got the manual and then here's the overlays that i was talking about those go on the uh, on the controller, and they tell you how to how to play the game. So, definitely, if you're buying in television games, make sure it's got the manual, and make sure it's definitely got these overlays. Each game should come with two. So we've got auto racing, tennis, again, I, I love the artwork on these boxes. NFL football. Just 
which is awesome. Love me some football. PBA Bowling. This is back in bowling's heyday right there, the uh, late 70s. And the, the graphics don't really look that bad considering, you know, we're talking about a pre-1980 console. Here's a NASL Soccer. We've got Boxing. See the overlays are coming out. They're falling out on me. Here we go. You got a yellow guy and a green guy. Put all that stuff back in there. We've got Major League Baseball. Got to have MLB. And I love these uniforms, man. Like they drew the uniforms, obviously, like they were back in the day. And uniforms, baseball uniforms weren't as cool back in the day as they are now but they were just like bright loud colors the most obnoxious color schemes you could find so yeah pretty awesome we've got pga golf again kind of reminds me of uh, caddyshack with the way that they're dressed we've got nba basketball Got to have a basketball game. And our last sports game here is NHL Hockey. And that's what it looks like. All right, let's get these sports games up on the shelf. All right, next stack, we've got uh, the game, the packing game before Mario Duck Hunt. Las Vegas, Poker and Blackjack. That was the packing game. I don't think you could get away with packing in a gambling game with your console now, but. Las Vegas, Poker and Blackjack. We've got Super Video Arcade Skiing. I mean, just look at the intensity on that guy's face. We've got Super Video Arcade Space Hawk. Super Video Arcade Astro Smash. Now, Astro Smash is a pretty interesting game because it looks like a cross between Space Invaders and Asteroids. And I haven't played it yet, but uh, I think these like things just fall down and like Space Invaders style, you go across the screen left and right and you try and shoot up. Yeah, unfortunately, my, my Intellivision doesn't get a whole bunch of play time. So we'll throw these up on the shelf. All right, now this game, um, this is Bomb Squad, and this game was made for the Intellivoice, which is interesting. I saw one of those uh, Intellivoice systems at a uh, game store, I don't know, like eight months ago or a year ago or whatever. It wasn't very expensive, but uh, yeah, so this game will, game will talk back to you. So there's that, and you know, there's nothing different. Oh, this is the one. Okay, I knew it was going to be in there, but okay, so like the... Cartridge fell out, but the manual goes in here and the the inserts go in that way. It's a little bit different. But I wanted to share this with you. I don't know if you guys are interested or not, but I'm going to share it. Back in the day, you know, before Nintendo, <laughs> um, when you went to a store and you got a receipt, it didn't print out of the machine. Somebody had to hand write it. And there was a carbon copy on the back, another sheet on the back. So you'd press hard and make two copies. And then they would give this one to you. And then the store would keep the uh, the white copy. But this is 11-13-1982 Bomb Squad. $34.74. $2.26 tax. So $37 even. At the Hillcrest Hobby Shop. 5852 Mayfield Road. Mayfield Heights, Ohio, 44124. 
I don't know. Somebody look that up and see if that's still there. But yeah, these little receipts are pretty awesome. And when I can, I try and leave those with the game, you know, to kind of preserve history a little bit, I guess. And then I also have a, uh, another IntelliVoice game. This was highlighted in the AVGN episode, but it's a B-17 Bomber. B-17 Bomber! That's what it sounds like. But there's the, uh, the back art there. Looks pretty cool. You guys, you gotta understand, that was a big deal back then. Right? No internet, no 3D graphics. That's what we got, <laughs> you know? Alright, so we'll get our two IntelliVoice games on the shelf. We'll put them right there. All right, all right. Moving on, we've got Armor Battle. Looks awesome. Kind of looks like a combat or tank or something. Make sure. Yeah, we got Snafu. It's kind of a weird cover. Tron Deadly Discs. So I said that with some intensity. Looks pretty awesome. We've got Space Battle. Again, man, I love the cover art on that. Lock and Chase. Kind of Pac-Man-esque right there. Here's one you don't see every day. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Which is awesome. Again. Triple action. It's a game with airplanes, tanks, and cars. You guys are sick. That one's got three screenshots on it. We've got Sea Battle. Again, very cool. Now, again, this isn't one that I've played, but, uh, you know, like this type of map screen kind of reminds me of Silent Service on the NES. You've got uh, Sub Hunt. Woo. You got to watch it because these doors, these doors will swing open and cartridges and all kinds of stuff will come out. And that's what Sub Hunt looks like. Looks like you're looking through a periscope as if you were a sub and you were hunting. Just going to keep piling them up, folks. Here we go. Last stack. We've got uh, Utopia. Which is cool. We've got uh, Backgammon. I actually don't even know how to play Backgammon in real life, so I'd be totally screwed on, on this thing. And it looks like Backgammon. We've got Star Strike. Space Hawk. Like, this is weird. Like, what's this little ball thing? Is that a planet? What's this green thing? What's he shooting? Like, what is this? What are we doing? It looks badass, though. Do we already have that one? Yeah, we do. Okay, cool. I was going to say, we got two different versions of Space Hawk. See, we learn something every day. So if you're interested in trading for a copy of Space Hawk, I thought that back art looked familiar. I was like, what the hell? We got Loco Motion. Train games. Looks all messed up back there. 
We've got uh, Space Armada. Let me make sure we don't have another one of these. Space Armada. Again, man, there's just a lot of stuff going on in the cover. And in the end, it's Space Invaders. <laughs> All right, throw these up there. We've got Burger Time. Classic Burger Time. This is the only game out of the entire collection that is uh, not complete. It doesn't have the manuals or the overlays. But Benevolent Dick, fellow YouTuber Benevolent Dick, swears that this is like the best version of Burger Time. So that's what it looks like. It looks like Burger Time. Can't have any console from back in the day without having Danky Kang. Some Donkey Kong action. Now, I think they went a little generic on the cover here, just putting a picture of the uh, the arcade machine. But um, yeah, what are you, you going to do? I, th I think they skimped out a little bit. But I think when someone says Donkey Kong, you know what that means, especially in 1979. There's the back. Graphics are bad. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. I mean, you can only you can only do so much back in the day, right? All right, so then I've got a, a three. The last three games are a Magic games, iMagic games, Imagic. I don't know. Maybe somebody can help me with the uh, pronunciation. But they come in a little bit different packaging. So here's Demon Attack or new demon attack but they come in these really cool silver foil uh cases again the cover art's really cool the back art you know is exceptional but these games like open this way and inside you get the manual you get a couple overlays and then the game sits in there like that so and it's kind of a pain in the butt actually to, to store these because you go you go into the box to grab a game, and you grab it this way, and everything slides out. So, if you collect in television, pay attention for that. I don't know. We've got uh, the new Swords and Serpents. I think this actually is uh, valuable. One of these games is like a $30 or $40 game, which is the most expensive game in my Intellivision collection. But yeah, you got that Knight Dude on there. Looks pretty awesome. You got the dragon. I'm trying to figure out why it's so. Oh, there might be a poster or something in there. Um, and then the last game here, we've got Atlantis. Again, these cases, these boxes are awesome. I call it case. But um, there is the back art. All right, let's get these on the shelf. Well, guys, that is my entire 36-game in television collection. I guess since I've got Space Hawk twice, I guess that's like 35 games. I don't play a lot of in television. I probably should, but um, I didn't grow up with it, so I'm not really that attached to it. So at one point, I was thinking about just selling off this entire collection of games and maybe getting something that I wanted, but I do like the box. I like the box art, and uh, it's kind of something cool to have in your collection you don't really get a lot of them but i'm not not actually out looking to complete an intellivision collection so guys tell me what you think of the intellivision do you collect for the intellivision is it a system that you would like to collect for let me know your thoughts leave it in the comment section down below thanks for watching guys alex mc Mer, jason thanks for inspiring this video and uh, check out their channels links are in the description and we'll see you guys next time